Financial inclusion has long been highlighted as a key benefit stemming from the development of the blockchain world. And tokenization is a key component to this as it allows for the fractionalization of assets, which of course enables more retail investors to get on board. But could this element of financial inclusion be improved? And who better to ask about the potential tokenizing the world offers than Henry Chong, CEO of Fusang. Fusang aims to reshape investment markets with blockchain technology. So, Henry, we got to ask you, financial inclusion, you know, it is, it is that holy grail. And we know that fractionalization can open up assets that were previously inaccessible to investors. But is that enough? And, and what more could be done to further open things up and enhance inclusion? I think fractionalization is just one small piece of a larger message around access. The truth is that a lot of individuals today just don't have the same kind of access in financial markets that quite frankly, rich people do. Uh, and you know, people once, uh, you know, people say, hey, where are the tokenized assets? There are a lot of them out there, obviously. We've got all kinds of cryptocurrencies, NFTs, etc. Uh, and that world is expanding rapidly and scaling like we've never seen an asset class before. And my issue has always just been that as interesting as the technology is, as interesting as this idea of tokenization is, we've got to still ask, hey, what are these assets? And in terms of having tokens backed by real assets, shares in companies, uh, real estate, etc., those are still few and far between. But when you open it up to retail, a big chunk of it is understanding just what the opportunity is. So how does opening up the markets in this way apply to um, even bonds? What advantages does that offer uh, from a retail market perspective and also an institutional market perspective? When it comes to things like bonds, um, a lot of demand that we're seeing in areas like ESG, for example, is actually driven by individuals and by retail investors. This is a demand-driven revolution. People are saying, I do want to make good investments, but I also want to do good for the world. And institutions are forced to respond to that overwhelming wave of demand. Um, you know, even in our corner of the world, in Malaysia, things like Islamic finance, sukuks are, uh, you know, a, a very important part of what people want to invest into. Again, though, a very close, limited access market. And I think that individuals should have the right to deploy capital to the asset classes where they want to invest, especially when these are, quite frankly, probably safer investments, things like bonds or sukuks that give you that uh, fixed rate of return at a much lower risk. Yeah, I want to pick up on that point because, you know, Malaysia is a fascinating market. You have a lot of experience, obviously, there. Um, and the market for sukuk Islamic bonds is huge. How about the potential for those to be tokenized? Is there demand for such a thing even? What are your thoughts? Malaysia as a country dominates the world in terms of volume and, and you know dollar value of sukuk issuances. Um, and yet most of that is priced in ringgit, a local currency, not really accessible to foreign investors and certainly not accessible to retail investors. It's really a very institutional market. You've got issuers who want to issue sukuks and you've got kind of long only investment funds and pension funds who buy into these things. And that all works, but it means that the individual doesn't have a chance to access that market, not directly. And I think they should because Sokoks as a market are, are interesting because the default rate is phenomenally low. And for our audience not too familiar with Sukuk Islamic bonds, explain that a little bit and what the opportunity is. Coming back to our message about financial inclusion, uh, Sukuks as an instrument uh, at their core, almost by definition, require that element of financial inclusion or at least alignment. That idea that if I invest into a project, I need to be aligned with the project and I need to have an interest in the outcome of the project as opposed to a debt investor who, quite frankly, may or may not care about the success of a company. They just want to make sure they get their coupon payment. And it sounds very much aligned to the philosophy behind tokenization. And there we have it, tokenizing the world. Henry Chang of Fusang, thanks so much for joining us today.